Hey everybody, the month of October on our calendar is a much stronger watch this year than September was. We have 10 major watch events coming up this month. First, we just entered the 10th month in the 7th year of the quote-unquote king on the Gregorian calendar. This may be significant because in the book of Esther, we're told the bride was taken in the 10th month of the king's seventh year. The story in Esther seems to parallel what we're told about the fall of Babylon, so the whole month of October is the 10th month on the Gregorian calendar, and we are currently in the seventh year of Obama's presidency. And again, his presidency seems to have been highlighted for some reason in the book of Daniel, and there are also some points in the Esther story that may point to the United States. I have a video on that link below, so this whole month is a watch for that reason. Second, the seventh year of Daniel's week appears to be starting on October 9th. Obama's presidency started in January 2009, so we've been in his seventh year since January 2015, but the week described in Daniel 9 did not start until after the 62nd Shabuah, which was Shavuot in the spring summer of 2009. Specifically, that week in Daniel 9 begins at the cutting or confirming of a covenant by the one called Messiah, and Obama won the Peace Prize in October 2009, and the reasons cited for that award was Obama's confirmation of the UN Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty. That is a worldwide treaty that was enacted by the seventh head of the beast, the Eighth Kingdom, and the Peace Prize Committee said the reason they awarded Obama the Peace Prize was for his confirmation of that worldwide treaty. We've had a fulfillment of everything in the Daniel 9 prophecy except the desolation in the midst of the week, the destruction of the city, and the ceasing of either Passover and the tribute or the ceasing of the Thanksgiving and gift. We're obviously coming up on the Thanksgiving and gift in November and December, and Daniel indicates the desolation when it occurs will be by a flood. That ties into Revelation, which tells us the flood is caused by a millstone hitting the sea. So we're on watch for the prophesied meteorite that will destroy Babylon, but we're told that is accompanied by a rescue, so we're also on watch for the rescue. That watch will continue until the year 2021, but 2015 and 2016 are the final years of what appears to be Daniel's week. So we're currently in a very high watch. So October 9th will start the final year of what appears to be, by the fulfillments, the seven-year period in the book of Daniel. So this final year, which lasts until October 2016, is a very high watch for the desolation because Daniel tells us it will happen within that week. So October 9th will start that final year, and in October 2016, we will exit that period. October 9th is also the Draconid meteor shower, which was part of the Revelation 12, Daniel 12 fulfillments that occurred in 2012. In addition to Daniel's 1290th day, the day the idol of terror was set up, otherwise known as the abomination of desolation, and also the 1335th day, the day the blessed were longing for. In addition to those two fulfillments, we also had a precise fulfillment of the sign described in Revelation 12 that the prophecy says will accompany the abomination of desolation. These prophecy fulfillments occurred three months in a row in August, September, and October of 2012. And this fall in 2015, we're reaching the three-year mark from that final sign, which will not occur again for another 500 years. The sign itself involved the celestial configuration that occurred on October 16th, 2012, but it also involved the dragon standing before the woman who cast the stars to the earth. That was the draconid meteor shower that occurred on October 7th, 2012. So October 16th, 2015 will mark exactly three years from the celestial configuration, and October 7th, 2015 will mark three years from the dragon casting the stars to the earth in 2012. So the entire period from October 7th to October 16th this year will mark exactly three years from the entire sign described in Revelation 12, which occurred in 2012. Since years also represent days in the Bible, this means the rising on the third day is a watch, specifically in October 2015. During that same time period on the calendar here, you may have noticed these 40-day watches. This is 
something completely different, but just as a side note, the last 40-day watch we were looking at was September 1st through the 3rd, and on September 3rd, the U.S. received a satellite image of the destruction of the Palmyra Temple. The destruction of the temple apparently occurred on Sunday, August 31st, so this may have been the 40-day event, but if it is, I need to reevaluate the pattern these events are occurring on. That's why I have a large window for that watch in October. I need to reevaluate that pattern that started last year. So that reevaluation will depend on what occurs, if anything, between October 5th and October 14th. So that's that's a completely different subject, which I'll cover more in another video. But I think it's interesting that that window almost perfectly lines up with the three-year anniversary of the sign of Revelation 12 that occurred in 2012. So that's a watch right there coming up next week. We also have the true appointed time of trumpets occurring on the window of October 13th through the 15th this year. The true appointed time of atonement on the window of October 21st through the 23rd, and the true appointed time of tabernacles on the window of October 27th through November 5th. Those are the true ancient appointed times for the northern hemisphere as the Bible tells us to calculate them, and as the Bible also seems to have confirmed with the sign described in Revelation 12 occurring on the exact date of the true appointed time of trumpets in 2012. But the texts seem to be indicating that the northern hemisphere appointed times match up with the southern hemisphere appointed times in the spring and fall. So in the southern hemisphere, the start of the first month will occur in the window of October 13th through the 15th, and Passover and Unleavened Bread will occur in the southern hemisphere on the window of October 26th through November 3rd. The reason these watch windows are longer than normal is, first of all, the biblical days start in the evening and last until the evening of the next day. So even on the standard calendar, each biblical date is marked on the Gregorian calendar for two days. But the Bible does not make it clear whether we're supposed to calculate those days from the actual new moon or the first visible crescent of the new moon the next day. For that reason, we watch both the evening of the new moon until the evening of the next day and the evening of the first crescent and the evening of the next day. That gives us a three-day window for each of the possible true appointed dates given in the Bible. So the seven-day appointed times are also expanded because each of the seven days has a three-day possible window. So I'm sorry if some people are not understanding that or don't want to understand it, but it, it is the most accurate way to do this because, again, the biblical texts do not make clear whether to start counting on the new moon or the first visible crescent the next day. We need to consider all possibilities if we want to find the truth about these appointed times because, as we know, the little horn changed the times, and the little horn is Israel. So the, the Jewish feast days are not the true feast days. They are not the true appointed times. So in order to find the true appointed times, we need to consider all the possibilities. So those are the windows for the true appointed times according to the way the Bible says to do it. Also notice the Orionid meteor shower is occurring on the exact window for the true appointed time of atonement this year. Earth Sky website says the Orionids have a broad and irregular peak that isn't easy to predict. This year, 2015, presents a fine year for watching the Orionid meteor shower. The best viewing for the Orionids in 2015 will probably be before dawn on October 22nd. Try the days before and after that, too, sticking to the midnight to dawn hours. So they're telling us to watch for the Orionids from October 21st through the 23rd between midnight and sunrise. Also notice they're saying here that the Orionids sometimes produce bright fireballs. So that's occurring right on our window for true atonement this year, the Orionid meteor shower. And what makes the Draconids and the Orionids more significant than any other meteor showers throughout the year is that the Draconids were mentioned in the prophetic book of Revelation signaling the escape and the destruction of Babylon, and the Orionids are coming from an area in the sky that astronomer Robert Harrington believed Planet X may be present, which, if that is causing the comets and asteroids, as some scientists believe, then the prophesied meteorite may be coming from that area as well. And Orion is also mentioned in the Bible on several occasions. So the Draconids and Orionids are something to watch this month. Then we also have the fifth watch coming up from October 
26th through the 29th, which is based on this pattern of fulfillments that have been happening for the past five years. I don't know if this pattern will continue or not, but I think it's interesting that these fulfillments started in the fall of 2011, when these strange synchronicities also began having to do with Comet Elenin and YU-55. I still don't know what this meant, but it was not merely a coincidence. These events seem to point to the time period between September through November. This is a chart of the vision fulfillments from October 2011 to October 2014 and how they relate to these other events synchronistically. Again, I don't personally know what all of this means, but I still don't think it's without meaning. It also ties into the movie Deep Impact, which appears to have been a prophetic film depicting many of these events that occurred after the movie was released. The movie depicts a comet hitting the Earth, specifically in the Atlantic Ocean, which, as we've seen, seems to confirm biblical prophecy. But remember this Orion project that was mentioned in the film. In real life, Project Orion was designed to deflect an asteroid that could collide with Earth. In December 2014, the spacecraft Orion was launched, and in the movie Deep Impact, the president mentions that and says in 10 months, the asteroid will hit the Earth. 10 months from December 2014 lands in October 2015. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just pointing that out. That's another reason this is a watch month. I have a few videos on Vimeo that show clips from that movie, and I'll link it below. So the Draconids and the Orionids in October are always watches for those reasons, more so than any other meteor shower throughout the year. And we're now entering this month, the final year of what appears to be Daniel's week from October 2015 until October 2016. The other interesting point is that many other people who are not associated with each other are also highlighting this time period. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn has, in recent years, presented the case that the Jubilee year starts in September 2015 and lasts until September 2016. The mystery of the Shemitah that he wrote a book about is in reference to the seven-year cycles that are explained in the Bible and seem to have been playing out for the past 50 years with significant events occurring always in the seventh year. In the biblical text, this pattern continues until the seventh seven-year cycle. Jonathan Kahn was bringing attention to the fact that September 2014 to September 2015 marked the seventh year of the seventh seven-year cycle. In other words, the 49th year. But in the Bible, the more significant year is not the 49th year, but the 50th year. So according to Rabbi Khan's research, we just entered the Jubilee year in September 2015, and this will last until September 2016. There are other YouTubers that have been saying for years that the Jubilee will start in September 2015, and our Jesuit Pope Francis announced in March of this year that the Jubilee year will start in December 2015 and last until November 2016. So it seems something is going on if all these people who are not associated with each other or who vehemently disagree over most everything else but agree that the fall of 2015 until the fall of 2016 is highly significant. I want to point out one more thing about this coming season. There's another author who, as far as I know, has no affiliation with Bible prophecy at all. Yet in his recent book released this year, he allegedly cites an inscription that was carved into an ancient stone monument that indicates a comet may hit the earth in the next 15 years. I haven't read the book yet because it won't be released until November 10th in the U.S., but this article from the Daily Mail explains the connection. I'll leave the link below if you want to read the whole thing. What's interesting is a According to Graham Hancock, this is not the focus of his book. I did read his previous book, Fingerprints of the Gods, and this sequel, from what I can tell, is focused on providing the scientific evidence that a highly advanced civilization existed in our ancient past. Apparently, the evidence shows that this ancient civilization was destroyed by a comet impact in the past, but ancient prophecies from different cultures around the world say it will happen again. He mentions a limestone pillar at one of the ancient archaeological sites, which shows the stars not in the position they were in at the date the pillars were formed, but instead in the positions they're in today. This article here also mentions an astrophysicist and astronomer who believe a giant unseen comet is concealed inside a cloud of debris known to astronomers as the Torrid Meteor Stream. The Torrids are associated with the comet Enki. They are named after their radiant point in the constellation Taurus. They are also called the Halloween fireballs because they occur between October 
October 20th and December 10th in the Northern Hemisphere. The date of their peak is November 12th. I think it's interesting that Hancock's book is releasing in the United States on November 10th during the rise of the peak of the Torrids, and in his book he apparently discusses the significance of the Torrid meteor stream. I guess he claims this has something to do with the year 2030 or thereabouts, but in the research I've been doing, the Bible prophecy, which has a proven track record, is indicating that the meteorite will hit by the year 2021. And if it does not happen by the year 2021, it won't occur for another 500 years. So I don't necessarily believe in that 2030 date, but I think it's interesting that this ties into the research so many others have been doing, including Robert Harrington's research about the location of Planet X, possibly in the constellation Taurus, which is where the Taurid meteor shot comes from, and the fact that the Torrid meteor shower begins around the same time as the Orionids and the Draconids, which are both mentioned in the Bible. So this is a very large puzzle for which no one individual has all the pieces. Everyone is doing their best, and the pieces are still coming from a very wide range of people from different backgrounds and genres. So those are the watches in October this year. The only thing in November I know about so far is the Torrid Meteor Shower, which lasts through the whole month, and also Thanksgiving, which, as we've talked about before, may be a reference in Daniel 9. So October is a very big watch month this year. So that's it for now. If you want more information, you can check the links below this video. And again, thank you so much to those who are supporting this work. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.